What is going on guys? I'm Matt, this is MotoWorks. And as you saw, that was a pain in the butt to get that figured out. So let me show you, I know I just played a little quick clip here in the beginning of the video, but uh, let me just show you the ridiculous stuff I just had to go through and probably I didn't have to go through any of it. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're probably losing your minds in the comments below saying it's a lot easier than that, but wow, that was a pain in the butt. I got a 500 pound hydraulic cart or hydraulic table, whatever you want to call it. You know, this should lift up at least 500 pounds. So I had that cart. Problem with the cart is I had no way of getting the engine onto the cart because the engine is a little heavy now that it has a transmission on it. I can pick up just the engine, but I can't pick up the engine with the transmission. So I figured, well, I'm just going to scrap the cart idea and I'll use my engine hoist. So I tried the engine hoist and I tried, actually I tried the cart kind of in the way there or, or in the picture in some fashion. And that didn't work, so I got the cart out of the equation. Then I tried to just put the engine behind the frame and hoist it with the crane. That didn't work. So then I got the brilliant idea, move the frame out of the way, get the hoist, put the cart, you know, out of the way of the hoist, take the engine hoist, lift the engine, slide the cart in, put the engine on the cart. That worked good. Now I have the engine on the cart just like it did. Problem was, I couldn't then slide this engine into the frame because it was too high. My cart sits too high for this to just slide into the frame. So enter the tire stance. My goodness, this was a pain in the butt. But I had to put the frame, which the wheels are attached to the frame. I had to roll that up onto the tire cart or the, the um, wheel. I don't even know what they're called right now. But anyway, the, the roll-on jack stands is what I'm going to call them. And then once I did that, I had enough clearance to slide the engine in, jack it up, and boom, now it's in. Holy cow, that was a pain in the butt. But the engine is in, and uh, I'm just going to go through and start tightening everything down, making sure that I have hoses routed correctly, wires run correctly, before I start to try and shimmy this into the back of the car. Now I haven't even tried to put this into the car. I think that the height of it is going to be an issue, but I won't know that until I actually try to lift this assembly up into the back of the car. I might have to jack the back of the car up, but that's to be seen. Oh, but here goes nothing guys. Um, that's what we're gonna try and do here. And then, like I said, by the end of this video, I want this engine at least in the car and things starting to get plugged in and wired up. Maybe we'll fire it up. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but um, the engine is in the cradle. So we'll see you when I pick the camera up again. All right, this here is a test of the Harbor Freight cart table, <laughs> hydraulic table, hydraulic cart, whatever they call it. Uh, my buddy Scotty didn't think that 500 pound capacity was enough. He thinks that this weighs more. So uh, it is a Harbor Freight 500 pounds. So we're going to find out. We're going to put this thing to the test. Either the cylinder is going to explode or it's going to lift this whole assembly up so I can get these uh, uh, roll on jack stands out of here. It's either going to work or it's not. So far, so good. Until it all comes crashing down, right? Nice and easy. And then I'm going to see if this all fits underneath the car. Because that's also important. So that rolls. Might actually work. I will say that the casters on this aren't the best. It's like pushing a worn out shopping cart.
Everything is fitting in there pretty nicely. Uh, it does look like I have to do some finagling here. Uh, just the little odds and ends. Get the hoses and stuff uh, routed correctly. Get the AC and all that stuff connected back up to the car. Now the nice thing about this is this actually is designed with uh, servicing in mind and that these engines are actually designed to hang down a little bit so that everything's easily accessible, you know, to do general service, general maintenance to this. Uh, there's actually a kit I saw where it gives you extended bolts for this stuff here where it'll actually hang this whole cradle down a little bit so that way you can get in here and work on the alternator, stuff like that. So should be able to start hooking things back up getting stuff attached and then yeah we'll see where we're at but that's awesome my cart kind of worked it's a little bit off kilter there but it works enough for me so i'm happy but uh yeah awesome good progress good progress well that escalated quickly it's now many hours later but the cool thing is the engine's in. Yay! So I did get the engine in. I do... I'm probably going to be kicking myself, but I did not hook up the cooling li coolant lines when I put this in because I figured it would be easier once I got the cart out of the way to try and finagle them in. You know, going in from this way here and trying to finagle the hoses on. But we'll see. Maybe that bit me. I think I have the ability to remove that front engine mount dog bone and I can swing the engine, you know, I can rock it forward. And I think doing that will give me enough of an angle to get at those. If not, then I guess I have to pull the engine back down at least. But uh, it is in. It was not that difficult. It was just time consuming. Um, just remembering where everything went. It's been a while since I took it apart. And um, anytime you take something apart and let it sit for a while, I didn't, I foolishly didn't label anything, but uh, really there weren't that many bolts. So it wasn't like I didn't know where the bolts went. I just couldn't find the bolts. So I should have put them away better. And I know I, I I've even made videos on staying organized and I just, pfft, I just wasn't. And uh it bit me for it. Like I said, it took me a couple extra hours than it should have, uh, you know, just looking for different fasteners, hardware, stuff like that. But uh, it is in. I have the oil draining. So got the old stuff out. It looked good. I mean, it's not milky, so it is a little dirty, but it's not completely soot cover colored. And uh, it's also not milky, like I said, like the other engine was. So that's a good sign. I ended up tinting my taillights tonight as well. I just threw some tint on there. So I got some tinted taillights there. I just got the old shaky bomb nightshades there. I just did two coats on the taillights. Why not, right? There's the other one over there. I did have somebody ask me why these came apart so easy. It's because the previous owner never put the, the hardware that connects that center piece together. So I will have to figure out a way to fasten that. I think zip ties are going to be my solution. But um, yeah, the reason that was so easy to get that center piece out is because it was not there in the first place. That all oh, the hardware to mount it at least. We're making some good progress. That's going to do it for tonight. I'm going to come back. We'll turn the camera back on and I'm going to hook up all the hoses. And once I get the coolant hoses on and the fluids in, I'm just going to try and fire this thing. Um, obviously, I'll have the axle stuff like that hooked up. I'm going to get it to the point of running ready to drive. And I just want to crank it over, make sure it starts before I completely assemble it the rest of the way um so yeah we're just gonna keep knocking out the uh little projects little things to do finish it up get this thing running so uh yeah good progress tonight